This is Andres Mayer, immigration attorney and an immigrant himself. This is our new series, which we call Welcome to America, An Immigrant Story. In this series, we take a deeply personal look at the struggles immigrants face when coming to America and how many who were unauthorized to be in the United States ultimately got their legal status. We will look at a different immigrant each month in four segments, one each week. Each segment will follow their progression from before they entered the U.S. until they received legal status. If you or a family member is an immigrant, you will be able to relate to these stories. More importantly, you may find hope and solutions to your personal immigration problem. If you are not an immigrant, I think you will find these stories heartwarming and inspiring. At the very least, you will better understand the difficulties immigrants face. Click the subscribe button below now so you don't miss a single episode. Also, I invite you to tell us about your immigration story in the comment section. We may use your account in a future episode or ask you to be a guest and share your story with our many followers. Together, we might just solve your immigration problem. So, welcome to America. In this month's episode of Welcome to America, an immigrant story, you will hear Yulia's story. She is a 20-year-old Ukrainian woman who just got married but was forced to leave her country because of armed conflict, leaving her husband behind, who had to protect their motherland. To survive yet remain close to her husband, she took a job in Poland but almost got caught up in human trafficking. Fearing for her safety, she decided to travel to the United States, where she has family. The newlyweds. It's been two weeks since their wedding. Yulia and Bowden are now easing back into their everyday lives in Kyiv. Yulia woke up early and got ready for work, she is a cashier at the local market near their new home. She has known the shop owner for years, and most of her co-workers are also friends. It was a typical day for Yulia, she greeted their regular customers, chatted with some, had lunch with her friends, worked some more, and then clocked out. Her husband worked as a loader for a warehouse just a few blocks away. He often goes to the shop to fetch Yulia so they can walk home together. It seemed like the day would end like any other. She and her husband went out for some drinks before going home to rest. But the following day, they were woken up by loud explosions and people shouting. The war. Yulia woke up startled and afraid. Boom! Another explosion went off. Right after that, the sound of panic filled the room. The couple scrambled for their phones to see news of what was happening. Soon, they discovered the truth about the shocking events. Another country had invaded their homeland. Yulia thought of her parents and only sister but then recalled that they were still on vacation in the United States and won't be back until the next day. She thought, they should not come back here. In a panic, her husband told Yulia they should cross to Poland and find a safe place. With their passports, a few clothes, some food, water, and money in their bags, they headed towards the back door, stopping briefly to check on their elderly neighbors. The older couple already had their stuff gathered in a pile near their entrance. Both were also headed to Poland. The escape. They got in their car with their neighbors and started to drive. They saw a crowd of people running and trying to escape Kyiv too. Buses and train stations were packed with families fleeing the danger. Yulia estimated it would take them around 12 hours to get to Poland. She worried it might take a lot longer to get there with the other people all running for their lives. They managed to get a full tank of gas and stocked up on food and water before leaving the city. The journey out of Kyiv was hell. It took them almost two hours just to get to the highway. Throughout the drive, they heard gunfire and explosions in the distance and fighter jets roaring in the sky. As they traveled to Poland, they checked the radio and their phones for news. The conflict is getting worse. They learned that tanks had now crossed the border and fighter planes filled the sky. Tension was high, and the roads were dangerous, but miraculously after almost 14 hours on the road, they reached the border of Poland. The border. At the border, traffic was at a complete standstill. They saw people walking up the border and thought it would be a good idea to do the same. They got out of the car and walked with hundreds of families with children, other couples, young people, and older people. The crowd made Yulia think about her friends back in Kyiv. Are they okay? Where are they now? Maybe they are here too, trying to get to Poland. Border officials are at a loss on how to handle all the people. 
Lines were miles long. The temperature was freezing and there was no shelter from the elements as they stood in line waiting to cross the border. They stood in line for three days, waiting to cross the border. Huddled together for warmth, they rationed what little they had and kept their eye on the fast developing events. It was taxing. They were cold, tired, and scared but finally, it was their turn to talk to border officials. Surprisingly, they were only asked to prove their identity. And since they have no criminal record, they were let through. They had finally arrived in Poland where they believed they would be safe, but Yulia still had many challenges ahead. The goodbye. Ukrainian men of fighting age had to stay to defend the homeland, so Yulia's husband was not allowed to cross the border. Her husband kissed her goodbye and promised that he would see her again soon, but he had to return to fight for their country. Yulia didn't want to be separated from her husband. She feared that she would never see him again, but knew he had no choice. Once in Poland, social workers greeted her along with others. They were given lodging and food, and some sense of security. But all Yulia could think about was her husband. Looking around, she noticed that most of the refugees were women and children. It broke her heart to see the state they were in. Families separated, children crying, and people longing for their loved ones. But she hoped that this war would soon end. And she would not let herself stay the victim. The job. She was given a state ID number to access the services Poland has for refugees. But for her, this is not enough. She tried finding a job, but with everything going on and being a refugee, her options were limited. She ended up working for a pub serving drinks. It was not legal for her to work in Poland, but she had to do something to earn money and keep her mind off worrying about her husband. One day, she was approached by her boss with a proposition. She was told to go out with some of the clients and was promised a huge pay. Yulia knew that this meant the client would expect sex in exchange for money. She had heard of girls in the same circumstances being taken and forced into sex slavery. The escape again. Yulia wanted no part of this, but she declined, she was threatened with physical harm if she did not do what she was told. Luckily, she got away and went straight to the authorities. She knew that it would not be safe for her to remain in Poland. Her family, while visiting the United States, had been granted temporary protected status, so they were able to stay in the US during the conflict. Yulia was able to contact them and after telling them the situation, they said they heard about the Ukrainian humanitarian assistance that would make it possible for her to go to the US. Her parents reminded her that she also has an active tourist visa to the US since she was supposed to accompany them on their vacation but stayed behind in Ukraine for an extended honeymoon. After discussing this with her husband, Yulia felt she had no choice as her safety was also his husband's priority. So, with a heavy heart, she decided to move forward with going to the US. But how will she do it? What will the process be like? How long will she be able to stay? What if she is not approved for humanitarian assistance? What lies ahead for Yulia? She is separated from her husband. Her parents and sister are overseas. Her country is in a state of war. Deciding to go to the US to be with her family meant that she would be halfway around the world from her husband. Will he be safe? What if she never sees him again? You'll need to tune in next week, hear the rest of the story. You'll also learn about the problems she may face in coming to the US and what assistance she may qualify for if she is able to get there. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will be notified once the new episode is out. In the next episode, we'll see the crucial factors that our immigrant wife, Yulia, needs to move forward and get to the US. If you find this video informative, then like and share it with your friends or loved ones who are on their own immigration journey as well. Also, please tell us about your story in the comments. We would love to hear from you, and your story may help someone else. If we like your story, you or your story may be featured in a future episode. Until next week, stay healthy and be safe.